All right, what's up, people? This is Sith Urian, and right now, as you may know, the Star Wars celebration is taking place right now in Chicago. Um, the panel for Episode 9 has come out. I wasn't able to watch this live. I've been filming all day. Um, I've, <laughs> I've actually been filming a hell of a lot of shit for like the last week or so. I'm just stucking up on the content, man. Like, next week, when Game of Thrones drops, like, man, I've got so much content coming up, man. It's crazy. Um, but right now... I've got to check this out, man. I know that they have released, like, some teaser trailer for episode 9 that was meant to have been debuted on this panel. I'm going to watch the panel, and then I might upload this as, like, a complete separate video, like, in full, the whole panel, my reaction to it. And then, like, just upload my reaction to the actual trailer itself as, like, a separate video. But because I'm going to try and have the whole panel here, copyright, I don't know how it's going to work. I'm going to try and upload the full thing. I don't really want to do like an edited down version. I would rather just do it like a hangout. But if there is going to be any copyright issues, what I will do is upload. But there'll be just basically the whole entire like video, but just without the content. And I'll, I'll put like a timestamp and you're going to have to sync it up with the actual video and have two windows open and watch along with me, basically. Yeah, if you like, you want to hear my thoughts about you know, the panel and, and any comments I've got to make. Like, guaranteed, most of it's just going to be me just sat here, just. <laughs> so I don't know, I might do an edited version. I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm just really excited, man. I really, really am. Like, I, okay, I wasn't necessarily a fan of The Last Jedi, I think. Like, I, I completely appreciate the fact that there are people out there who liked it. And if that's what you like, then that's fine. But I feel like I'm a part of the majority that didn't like it. I really don't understand Ryan Johnson's choice with his handling of Luke. The whole concept of, of going to the casino planet or whatever it was with Finn and Rose. Like just a waste of characters. Because I think that movie would have gone and played exactly the same without Finn and Rose in it at all. You know, and the whole thing with like the end part where uh, she sacrificed herself to save him and stop him from sacrificing himself. Like, just... There's just so many flaws in that movie. <laughs> like, I tried. I, I, I really, really did try to do, like, a review when it first came out. And I was sat here for two to three hours just ranting to this camera. Just... <clears throat> and I thought, man, no one's, like... No one's going to sit there for two and a half hours and just watch me say the same thing over and over again. Like, this movie's dumb. <laughs> Just picking flies and just finding so many flaws with it and just oh seeing Luke and just everything broke my heart and just yeah I'm just I'm I'm not a fan of episode eight. I really am not. Ep like Last Jedi to me is just it's funny because like everyone always said that like the Phantom Menace was the worst one of the like all the movies. <laughs> I would gladly watch the Phantom Menace anytime now, man. <laughs> I would gladly watch that over Fucking Last Jedi, good God. But I'm invested in this story because, of course, it's the last one of the main saga. I want to know how they're going to wrap it up. You know, I've, I really have no investment in it now. Like, Han's gone, Leia, sadly. You know, we've lost Carrie Fisher, even though I know that there are scenes of her in it. But it's just basically just deleted scenes. And I guess they've had to reincorporate those scenes into this one and rework the script or something. And, of course, we don't have Luke anymore. You know, the only original cast member we have now is Lando. And they'll probably kill him off in this. I really have no real investment in any of these characters. Like Ray, Ray's a nobody. They, they, they've already established that. You know, she's a nobody now. I always thought that, that she might have been like maybe like some clone because there was some theory that, that she was a clone of Anakin and made in female form and took away and hid on, on like, Jakku. Just, like, just kept secret. And that's why Anakin's lightsaber was calling to her because technically it's hers type, like... And clones have been used in, in, in this universe before, you know what I mean? So, I don't know, man. I really don't know. I don't care about Finn. I don't care about Rose. 
Only one I kind of care about is, is Poe, but like even he hasn't had, really had like some real good moments. Like I said, I'm just not invested in any of these new characters. I just want to just see how they're going to wrap it up. Because it's going to have to be big. You know, like, like there's eight movies. You've got eight movies to finish off. Just the full stop at the end of the long sentence. A long story. The last chapter. I don't know, man. But... <laughs> <laughs> kind of brought it down a little bit. Um... But yeah, man, let's do this, man. Okay, let's go. I'll pour a bit more of my drink. Woo! <laughs> Interesting how by the live they've got the Empire logo, not the First Order logo. Thank you. Or the Rebel or Thank like you. Resistance. Hello, it's Star Wars the Empire. Oh. Just saying. Please <laughs> sit down. You will need to conserve your energy for the exciting hour you're about to be a part of. Save a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Stephen Colbert. I am so excited. I just flew in from Dagobah, and boy, are my S-foils locked into attack position. And if you don't understand what I just said, what are you doing here? <laughs> now, you might be saying to yourself, wait, what is Stephen Colbert doing at the Episode 9 panel? I know he is a lifelong fan of Star Wars, but doesn't he do a TV show five nights a week in New York City? Doesn't he have a show tonight? How could he be here? Well, let me ask you this. Am I really at this panel right now? Wow, really? Isn't it just as likely I'm in lotus position on the roof of the Ed Sullivan Theater, force projecting myself onto this stage right now? There's no way of knowing. Go ahead, try to strike me down. I will become more powerful. He tried. <laughs> I will become more powerful than you can ever imagine. Also, and this is very important, do not try to strike me down, because I might actually be here and that would hurt. I also do have a security force with me, and at least one of them is a Nogri. Again, if you don't know what that means, why are you here? We know Star Wars isn't just a movie, or a cartoon, or a Christmas special. <laughs> okay. Or a breakfast cereal, or a soap dispenser, or a, or a Pez dispenser. It's, it's not even just an ice mold that makes one giant cube in the shape of a Death Star that makes your cocktail very fun. Yes, it's all those things, but it's not just that. It's also a place. It's a universe. It's where we go to get lost, to get inspired, to feel understood, to feel like anything is possible. 40 years in, more expansive and diverse than ever any of us can imagine being that young kid on Tatooine, about to take our first step into a larger world. I was once that kid, and on my best days, I still am. Now, a few months ago, oh, yeah. <laughs> my friend, J.J. Abrams, mi compadre, my soul cycle emergency contact, called me up and he said, Steve, would you do me a favor? And I said, of course. Why? Because again, he's my friend and I like to repeat that every so often. <laughs> but he's also a creative genius who understands the spirit and the joy of science fiction. And perhaps most importantly, because he let me visit the episode nine set. Lucky fucker. I know things. Oh, the things I know. I got to go in the thing, and I saw the place where they were. 
with the people you remember from that place? And you're not going to believe the new things for them days who usually have other things, but the, now they have a new one. This is going to be so much more exciting when we can use nouns. <laughs> of course, we're here today to talk about episode nine, the movie that completes the Skywalker saga. So let's get this thing started. It is my pleasure to introduce Skywalker the president saga. of Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy, it's and the true, director man. of First episode First three, Anakin. Nine, Next three, Luke. Abrams. Last three. It's got to be Kylo, isn't it? Kylo, what you're doing with yourself? Because technically he is the last real Skywalker. He's got like second names and everything. Like yes, he's Ben Solo, but yet he's he's a Skywalker. Oh. Please. Please. Let the games begin. Uh, here we go. Now uh, uh Hello Chicago. <laughs> Uh, Kathy, JJ, uh, obviously this room is electric. It's, it's, it's soaked with gasoline right now. We're just gonna light a match. Um, we know how these people feel. They are, they are just on the edge of their seats with anticipation. What is it like for you, for the people who have created this film, to have that first moment of revelation? Like, the, the things that you know you're gonna give to the audience today, the things they're gonna learn. You've done this before. What's, what's this moment like right before you open the present? Thank you, JJ. Um, you know, the thing I think about all the time is the responsibility we have. And we have it with all of you, and it's something that we talk about every minute that we're involved in making these movies, and this one in particular. I think the little film you saw at the front end, George was saying that this is the third act of a three-act structure? It is. That's exactly what it is. And we've immersed ourselves in everything George created, the talked the about act. it endlessly. Compared to the and first two. we're so <laughs> excited because I think what you're going to end up seeing, you're going to be so happy with. We are incredibly excited to show it. And this guy sitting next to me, he cares more than anybody I know. So. Uh, well, first of all, uh, thank you all for coming. This is unbelievable to, to be here uh, with you. Uh, I, I have to say, in, in answer to your, your question, Stephen, uh, hello, uh, in answer to your question, I, I think that, um, but I love you also. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the thing is that, that at this stage, we've been so sort of in that, in that focused cave of the editing room and working so, so hard with a very small group of people. And you're aware, of course, what Star Wars means to so many outside of those, those rooms. But to come here and to have this kind of warm uh, reception and to be physically, viscerally reminded of what it means uh, is the most amazing and exciting shot in the arm. And like Kathy said, uh, we cannot wait for you to see uh, what we're cooking up. Okay, so with that in mind, with that in mind, where are you in production right now? Uh, well, we're, we're, we're editing and we're doing you know, visual effects. When you, when you wrap a movie like this, uh, as you all uh, know and can imagine, uh, the directing doesn't stop, the, the, the story creation doesn't stop, so you keep, they actually love each other. They love each other. You'll, you know, it's the greatest thing in the world. Um, the, uh, the, the process continues, and so we're, we're editing, and things are uh, going pretty well so far. Well, uh, Kathy, as you were saying, this is, this is the, um, the final movie of a nine-movie arc. What, what's that like? There, it, that's unprecedented in, in, in filmmaking, to have this one story you know, over this period of time. As you said, the third... Uh, th th three three-act uh, plays, as it were. Yeah, it is, and I, I think that what's also fascinating is it's over 40 years. So the context that George was working within, it's 40 years later, and to keep this relevant and meaningful to the characters and to the people experiencing this story, it has to feel like it's 
of its time. And I think that what we've done is we've taken to heart everything that inspired George. And then I think the inspiration that JJ's brought to this has given it even more depth. Well, also, this, um, th th this movie, in addition to being the end of three trilogies, uh, it, it also needs to work as its own movie. Uh, and that's been part of the, the fun of it, part of the challenge of it. Uh, but th this movie, it's about this new generation and, and what they've inherited, the, the light and the dark, and asking the question as they face the greatest uh, evil, are they prepared, are they ready? And uh, it's been really incredible to look at this thing that George created and to bring it to a, a close in this way about this new generation. It is so hard to sit here next to you and hear you say the greatest evil without going, who is, what is? <laughs> Can you give us any hint? Kathy? <laughs> okay. Wow. Moving on. Moving on. I, was yep, lucky she enough, is, she? I was lucky enough to, to meet, interview Carrie Fisher a few times. And, and Wow, OK. Could she be the great evil? The evil emperor sitting on a throne, and fucking dictating I, shit? A little bit I knew Carrie Fisher. I know there's fundamentally no way to replace her as a person or as that person playing the character of Princess Leia. Um, how, how, did you, how did you approach filling the void left by Carrie in this, in this movie? Um, well, a, a, as I've said, we, we couldn't. And as Chris Terrio, the, the co-writer, and, and, and Kathy and Michelle Rejwan, producer, as we all talked about how to move on, I mean, she was the best. She was glorious. She was amazing. I mean, you know, um, and, and, and we, all, we all just loved her. And I, I knew her for many years before as well, uh, episode seven. She, she, was, she was the greatest. It, it, it was impossible. There was no way. What are you going to do? You don't recast that part, and you don't suddenly have her disappear. And the weird miracle of having had a number of scenes from uh, Force Awakens that had gone unused, looking at those scenes and starting to understand that there was actually a way to use those scenes to continue her story so that it would, it would be her. The idea of having a CG character was off the table. We'd never even want to try. And the idea of saying, well, what if we could actually write scenes around her. So it would be her performance, she's in the movie. And the crazy thing is, and I say this, um, like emotionally, I, it's, it's, it, it's every day it hits me that she's not here. But it, it's so surreal because we're working with her still, if that makes sense. She's in scenes, she's so alive in scenes and the craziest part is how not crazy it feels. She, she is See, there my, my worry is any storyline so aspects surrounding those deleted Billy, scenes. Her daughter, who is in the movie as well. It's just, it's just, oh yeah, we'll just write this so this happens. This film, write that so this that like, is, um, Kind of mind blowing to me. I don't know. Well, are there it's great that they're there and they're using it, but I don't know. It just kind of depends in. It just kind of depends on the context what, of what how. Are some it, of the differences you know. You can like, what are some of the new things in this film that you can share with us? Um, when last we saw the cast, they were all spread out. Um, you know, the, when those stories ended, they were not together. They had been, they had been split up. Are, are, are they, do we pick up exactly where we left off? Can you tell us anything about how far the stories have progressed? <laughs> um, Massive gasp. What I, was, what I will say is that... Uh, that the, the, the movie doesn't pick up immediately after uh, the last film. Uh, some time has gone by. And what I'll say is that in this movie, uh, and you could tell by that, that picture, uh, it, it's the very beginning of it, but this is a, 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 an adventure that the group goes on together. And this is, yeah. And it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's a story that I, I think, uh, what, one of the one of the great things about the one of the great things about the movie uh, getting to work on it was the dynamic between the characters. They are uh, they are just the most wonderful together, and that's the thing I'm sort of most excited for you all to see. What about uh, what about uh, your use of uh, CGI versus practical effects or locations or like is there a, is there um, can you talk about that no, at all? The director, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> 
Thanks. Um, uh. The I want to tell you so much, but I will say this: that 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 as with uh, the, the Force Awakens, what we tried to do, despite this being this epic space adventure that takes place on many worlds and in, in many places, um, <laughs> that we we did everything we could. Uh, building sets, uh, exterior and exterior, uh, interior and exterior, going to locations um, in and around uh, in, in England and in Jordan and other places. We did everything we could to have it in camera. One of my favorite things as a kid, and I still remember that visceral feeling at 10 years old, you know, seeing, uh, you know, looking at, at what I learned later was Tunisia, but it would felt like you knew you were in a real place. It was, you know, and, and to one of the infinite number of brilliant strokes that George had was to tell the this, this story in, in physical, actual, real locations. That's Jordan, uh, you know, the location. Wadi Rum. Wadi Rum where they shot, you know, Lawrence of Arabia, and you get there and you're just looking around, you can't believe what you're seeing, and it's amazing to have the, uh, the, the, the sort of that kind of beautiful nature uh, as a backdrop for sequences. Uh, so we tried to keep it as real as possible, as physical as possible. It was better for the actors, better for the movie. Kathy, what was, what was the last day of shooting like? You know, it was emotional, and I can't really give you details except to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. Remember, this were is the, a lot remember, of people on the set? end Were there of very a few act. people on set? Were... There were a few people on set, yeah. yeah there were a few. Just a few. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the point? I'm not going to get shit out of him. I'm like, just fluff. Oh, I, oh, I get it now. You, you asked me to come to Chicago to ask questions, not get answers. <laughs> okay. Whew. All right, let's... Uh, anything else you want to cover before I bring out some cast members? Uh... Sure? Cast members. Cast members. Cast members. Cast members. Yeah. All right, wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome C3PO, Anthony Daniels, and R2D2. Anthony, hello. Hello. I would love to have Anthony, a life-size fucking R2 film. unit, man. I would have it in my front room. Like, as soon as you walk in, bam, you see it. What <laughs> binds the films together and surrounds them? What is it like to be a physical embodiment of the Force throughout all these films? I never knew. I mean, I don't know where it is, but yes, what a beautiful way of putting it. But you know, I want to say something I know where first. where my Force is. Here I am. <laughs> tweets today, people were all over the world saying, I wish I could be here. And I know we're on camera. So I don't know where the camera is, but whoever is in Australia or all the other countries around the planet, I want to give you a big wave and you are here in spirit, okay? He's don't always been good at these, man. Because not everybody like, can He's always him. been winning so, to yes, one of the be things cool about, with the fans and everything. You will notice like, about 3PO is he is the, the voice of reason. I mean, you think Obi-Wan Kenobi knows it all. Yes. 3PO is the one who tells you that you're in danger. You should get out of there, yes? And what does everybody do in three trilogies of nine movies? They say, shut up. <laughs> well, I'm here to say, enough. <laughs> the droid fights back. He's looking old though, isn't he? Sadly. <laughs> Happens to us all. When you return, when you return to playing 3PO, do you ever say to yourself, oh, I wonder if I'll still fit in it? <laughs> it's like a bride going it, back it to the wedding dress. It is totally Were like you? that. And on the first fittings, generally, mm, bit of a squeeze. But then I'm back in the gym. Look at that. I'm on a diet, whatever. And I squeeze back in. Because oh, if wow. I don't... That's cool, man. What was really scary in that wonderful little pre-show history film you showed it had a picture of me with hair as black as JJ's. <laughs> Be yeah, warned, JJ. You <laughs> like, bastard. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, being 3PO has all sorts of parameters to it, you know. But 
I, I just love the guy, so I, I've got to tuck inside there somewhere. If, if 3PO was real and you could purchase one... Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> I know he was real. He was available. No longer available. A discontinued model a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. If 3PO was still under production, if, uh, would you want your own 3PO unit? Are you crazy? <laughs> Look, things like Alexa and Siri terrify me. I was once a sat-nav for the car. Yeah. At the next roundabout, turn left, take the fifth exit. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up. How did I know where... I mean, it's true. I actually had to turn myself off. It happens regularly every morning in front of the mirror these days, but you know. <laughs> would I want 3PO? I would want... Uh, I regard 3PO as, as my best, best friend in, in many ways. And I would genuinely want a best friend who cared for me as much as 3PO does. Leave it at that. That's very sweet. Stephen, is this a more satisfying interview so far? This? <laughs> I, I, all of this is exciting to me. All of this, I, I can't believe I get to be on stage with C-3PO. I, I can't believe I'm on stage with you three. I mean, look at this. This is a fan fest all of our own. Um, okay, uh, I, you, I understand you have a book, uh, Anthony, that's being announced tomorrow, and you can't give us the, the title of the book, okay? Right? Right. You can't give us the title. Right. But can you give us the title that you wanted to give the book that your editors said the audience wouldn't understand? He said the public won't understand. Worldwide, they won't understand. I was very hurt. I came up with this really cute title, and they said, no. Nah. Won't work. What was the title? Well, actually, would it be a scientific experiment? Sure. They said you would never understand. <laughs> Are you ready? If you understand the title of my memoirs of Star Wars and you get it, will you cheer? If you think indeed it was a numbnut title and you don't get it, will you boo? Are you ready? And the other people, are you ready? Yeah. And the people up in the cheap seats, are you ready? <laughs> the title of my memoirs was Telling the Odds. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Don't tell me the odds. How it's you? too late. They already printed the cover, which you will see at 11.30 tomorrow. And I will tell you that I actually do like their title as well. <laughs> All right, let's bring out our... our, our he belongs on stage, number. don't he? He's like proper um, like presenting. Uh, like, he belongs up there. Beloved. Landau Calrissian, Billy D. Williams! Woo! See, I still believe in this theory, right? Like, that they could have kept Luke in it, see? If you think about the timing and everything, um, Kerry passed away a year, roughly, to when, um, like, The Last Jedi, like, actually came out. They could have very sweet. easily refilmed some scenes sweet. where Luke didn't die on the rock. You're and he all, survived. You, you, and you're they all so just sweet. We do so it much. where he survived and he's in episode nine. Like, they could have redid it. They chose not to. They chose not to. They kept <laughs> with their original idea. They could have they could have redid it and kept Luke in it. And so Luke would be sat up there Love right back now. To you. Final movie. It's only Love right. Love back to you. No, I'm a very lucky person. And then in the final you know, movie, have him die or sacrifice this, himself uh, and pass on the torch or the lightsaber and do it that way. I Not agree in the with second you. fucking movie. <laughs> but um, I got lucky. <laughs> and uh, I ended up working with somebody that I have a tremendous regard for. Uh, J.J. Abrams, I love his name, J.J. Abrams. He's a beautiful young man. 
He's extraordinary. And uh, I could have given you know, him, I've, like, I've been Mike doing this for a long time. You, know, was, you I see think the dent in that? I've been doing this. And, uh, and I've been fortunate enough to work with some pretty extraordinary people in my lifetime. But this is uh, probably, I would, I would, I regard this as a real highlight for me. It's a true, genuine highlight in my life. Well, Billy, what was it like to come back to a character after so many decades? Was it like riding a bike, or did you have to... How did you find Lando again? How did I find Lando, Lando again? Yeah. Was it, was it easy to slip L back Lando the never cage? left me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you answer that question, man. Like, I am Lando. God, that looks weird, man. That looks so weird. There I see is. Lando, but the face is different. Uh, is it me? I love it. A shade older, but he's still yeah, there. Older. He's still hanging in there. <laughs> That's so well, weird, man. <laughs> Kathy, JJ, what was it like on the first day, the first time that uh, uh, Billy Dee Williams came back? Jaw-dropping. I mean, I think all of us just kept looking at one another. I know you didn't quite realize just how awestruck we were, but, it, I mean, it was just... Amazing. We, we had it was a big group scene, so there were a lot of extras, and and Billy came onto the set, and it was like, <laughs> and it just went silent, and everyone's just like watching, and it was just it was so sweet to see the reaction uh, from you know the the people who were working on the movie, uh, but it, it was you know it was honestly it was an emotional thing, it really was. And I will say the thing that I always love with JJ is that he'll turn to me. <laughs> He'll go, you know, you oh my know. God, can you believe this is happening? Can you believe this is happening? <laughs> you know, listen, I, it's nice to, 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 to have all of this, uh, these accolades and all of this admiration. <laughs> 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 but, you know, but, you know when, you're, when you're doing this kind of stuff, this acting stuff, and uh, to really have an opportunity to work with some really, really wonderful, extraordinary people is something I, I really enjoy more, more than just making money. <laughs> but uh, don't get me wrong, I love making my money. <laughs> 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 but, you know, just to be able to hang out and play around with ideas and with people like you, Monsieur JJ. <laughs> well, speaking you of money, Lando is experience. not entirely a bad guy, and he's not entirely a good guy either. Like w the last time we saw him, yes, he's 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 Han's friend, and he comes to the to the rescue, but he's he's a little bit of a lovable scoundrel at the same time. I would say he's he was a good guy. guy. He helped There's to attack the experience. fucking Death Star, the fucking in Return of the Jedi, oh, like he's, you know. You know um, um, he came when through you're in the a situation, end. especially when you're up against somebody like a. He helped Vader. to save Han when Han was captured uh, by Jabba. You like, have to, and you and you own. He's a bit of a scoundrel. But he was a good guy. He's pretty much like owning Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, if you're like a Steve Wynn, you know, kind of an entrepreneur, uh, and you have this kind of threat. Here's a guy chasing after the Boba Fett's chasing after. I have to explain this stuff to people. I don't understand why. <laughs> you, you don't have to explain uh, it to I, these I get, people. You know, I, I get sick and tired of being accused of betraying Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> Never going to live it down. It, look, no, it's like first person singular. You know, all of a sudden I'm talking about me instead of <laughs> Lando Calrissian. But anyway. He was up against Darth Vader. He, he had to figure something out. By the way, <laughs> did anybody die? <laughs> Nobody died, right? <laughs> Nobody died. <laughs> no, nope. he played it right. Wow. He yeah. played it right. He rolled the dice and he won. So, you know, I had to figure out how to, to, to uh, prevent the complete demise of my friend and his friends. So, really, in retrospect, the hero of all nine movies, Lando Carizian. Yeah. If you think about it. <laughs> all right. Exciting.
Well, we have, we have more cast members to introduce now. It is my pleasure to introduce the Next Generation cast. Please welcome Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, Kelly Marie Tran, Jonas Sotamo. Good to see you. Naomi oh, Ake. He's the new chill, right? And BB. It just occurred to me, like, who the fuck, man? Why is he so tall? Chill. The new chill. I don't want to interrupt. I don't want to interrupt, but but I will cheer this long too. But we got to get some questions. All right. Um, hey, everybody. Just because there was so much cheering, let's go over the names again: Daisy, John, Oscar, Kelly, Jonas, Naomi, and of course BB over here. Um, Naomi, you're you're the newest Hi. member of the I'm crew new. here. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. Oh, there's so many of you. Yeah, yeah there's a lot. Welcome That's to your really first cool. Star Wars celebration. Yeah, man. Are you I'm happy. I'm very ready to celebrate. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Hi. Yeah. Well, um, what's it like to get the call that you're going to be in the next Star Wars film? Like, um, where were you when you find out? I was in bed. <laughs> um, I, I, I got the call at like seven o'clock in the morning. Um, my best friend was sleeping downstairs and my dad was in the house and I like yelped. My dad ran up the stairs and he just sat at the end of my bed and he just had his hands like on his mouth. And I like open eye sobbed. I was just, I was sobbing it. But then my best friend was sleeping downstairs and I couldn't tell nobody, so I had to just like, I went down and made a cup of tea and I was like, you're right, babe, everything's cool. Like, yeah, just have a bed. <laughs> it, was, it was incredible. It was mind blowing. This is, this is mind blowing. What did your dad say when you told him? My dad, my dad was telling me to shush because I was talking too loud on the phone. So he was more telling me to, to be quiet so that <laughs> my best friend wouldn't hear. Um, but he's, yeah, he's, he, so he knew from the beginning. Sorry, JJ. He knew from. from <laughs> so we, he was we don't know. We don't know anything about your character yet. No. We don't know your character. We don't even know your character's name. Can she reveal yeah. the char character's name? Thank you. Her name is Jana. Woo! Woo! Um, I, I can't. I, Hello, yeah. Jana. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm so happy. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, yeah, man, that's wicked. Um, <laughs> um, I, I mean, all I can really say is like the, the original group are going on like this epic, epic adventure together, and I'm like so Don't say excited original group, because about they're not where the Jana crosses paths with them. <clears throat> um, it's wicked. No, I've been I've been told that yeah. there are rumors on the internet that your character is Lando Calrissian's daughter. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go full Mori Povich on you right now. <laughs> <laughs> is your father on this stage? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Lando is a very charming man, so he could have children all over the universe. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Am I <Yeah>. right? <laughs> Just gonna call it. Now, before, okay. before you do this part, your most famous uh, role was playing Lady Macbeth. Yeah. Does, does Shakespeare help prepare you for space opera? No. No, nothing. <laughs> I don't think anything can prepare you for this, actually. Not, not any kind of training at all. 
All right, John. Yo. Welcome back to Star Wars Celebration. Thanks, dude. Now, I know there's very little you can reveal. As always. So I will give you a choice. Either tell me what happens to Finn or try to explain Brexit to these people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm going to go with that Finn. Um, but it's a, well, actually, hi, guys. It's good to be He's a cool dude, man. Um, I'm, I'm not going to lie. He is Finn, a cool Finn, dude. Uh, I've watched him in many like, interviews. He's a good dude. Yeah, I'll see you in my curlers. <laughs> um, on, 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 this, on this adventure, I think Finn has just found his, his, his footing and his identity within the resistance. Um, I think the last two movies, Finn was, uh, couldn't decide where he belonged. And in this film, he's a full-fledged uh, resistance sexy young man, as you can see. <laughs> As you can see by the picture. Um, is that, a, is that a special division of the resistance, sexy young men? Uh, honestly, at the beginning, Full brigade. my big thing was costume. I always felt that Finn didn't have his identi identity through this costume. And JJ was like to me, you're going to love this one. And I, I saw the blue pants coming out of the, the cupboard where uh, Michael Kaplan was coming out with it. And I was just like, I'm in Star Wars now. <laughs> so it's been great. Now, um, Finn's enemy over the last two films uh, has been Captain Phasma. Yeah. It, it seems like she died in, in The Last Jedi, but She's it also gone. seems like peace. she died in The Force Awakens. Old news. She's gone. Got rid of her. She Does was Finn get any closure that was in this movie? Useless. Um, emotional closure, you know. <laughs> sure. I mean, I don't think about her at night and stuff. Um, <laughs> But I, d I definitely feel that there's some form of closure within, within who he identifies with, who is family, what is love, what is friendship, and, mm -hmm. and, and that's, what, that's what defines him in this movie. Mm -hmm. But Phasma, yeah, she did. <laughs> she did. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Finn has fought Captain uh, Phasma uh, twice, twice now? Yeah. But uh, could Finn take Brienne of Tarth? <laughs> I'm not even going to meet her. I'm going to just shoot her from the building and be like, yeah, she's done. She's done. Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Now, it seems like there might have been a, a, a little bit of a love triangle going on with Finn and Ray and Rose. Um, if you add Poe there as well, um, as a love triangle. Um, what? Very complicated. Very complicated. Oh, Finn and Poe. We've got a few aliens just, that have been looking at Finn okay. a certain type of way, so I don't know if they want to add their names to the list. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, it's, 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 a, it's a love pentagon, man. It's just, there's a lot going Finn on. Is Finn the galaxy's most eligible bachelor? I think he is, point. period. Period, point black. Um, <laughs> Finn, Finn, is, Finn is single and willing to mingle, so... Um... <laughs> Oscar, good to see you again. Great to see you. What's up, Chicago? I love him, man. He's such a good actor. Who? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I understand, I understand. Uh, let's get to the heat of the meat right away. Who's a better pilot, Poe or Han Solo? Ooh, we... Yeah, yeah. You did that, okay. huh? We're gonna go there. You're doing that to me. There was so much goodwill a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> you just... Burned it in front of my eyes. <laughs> All right, look, no one, no one can pilot the Millennium Falcon like Han. Nobody, mm -hmm. nobody. Right. However, <laughs> Poe is very, he can literally fly anything. I'm just saying Poe is the better Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. I don't know how I could possibly like the scarf? enjoy like the scarf, this movie. Yeah. I'm not sure if I could enjoy this movie more than I'm enjoying watching you enjoy these photographs right now. <laughs> this is, that's a high bar. Uh, now, you were born in uh, Guatemala, raised in Miami. Guatemala. <laughs> nice, Miami. <laughs> 305. I'm Cuban father, so Cuban and Guatemala. Star Wars has been translated into every language on the planet. What's it like doing press around the world 
when you're able to speak to the Spanish-speaking uh, press in their own language about the films? Like, how, how would you describe Poe or this film in, in, in Spanish? Well, it's, it's, it's just like this, but in Spanish. <laughs> like, Where are you going similar. with that question? Is Star like, Wars, the uh, forgive my ignorance, is Star Wars Star Wars in Spanish? Or is uh, no, it's Star Wars. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's actually Guerra de las Galaxias is the other one. Sorry, it's what? Guerra de las Galaxias. Which means? Uh, well, actually, I guess like ga War of the Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he's out. Bebocho. And, uh, and your buddy is uh, Arturito. <laughs> Little Arthur. Mm -hmm. Now, no, Poe is always uh, cracking a joke at the darkest moments. Uh, whether it's you know, taking on a dreadnought, an X-wing, or being interrogated to Kylo Ren. Is everything a joke to him? <laughs> Why won't he take any of this seriously? <laughs> I think he takes his love for Finn very seriously. Right, they're being very like diverse with very this seriously. new cast. He's a human, everything. you know. He's, I mean, are he they going to have like a gay couple? He has couple? no real special powers. Yes, he's a great pilot, but maybe he's just a human. Or right? just never directly like said like they're together. Find, just, you know, uh, irony <laughs> in the humanity in even the most crazy darkest moments. I think that that's a, that is an element of the Force. Humor. Uh, Poe was born into war. He was from Yavin 4, the planet the original Death Star uh, tries to destroy in episode 4. And his parents both fought the Empire. Let's say the war ends one day. What's Poe do uh, after the war is over? What's his fault? Uber back? seems like a good, good place to go. <laughs> uh, space Uber? Yeah. Space Lift? I don't know. You know, I, I, it's true. He's a bit of, he, he seeks a bit of that adrenaline, so he'll have to find it somewhere. <laughs> do I hear him looking at Finn? <laughs> well, <laughs> Daisy. Daisy Ridley. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Has. Thank you. 27. Oh, thanks, everyone. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Thank you. Never thought this would happen. Ever. <laughs> She's saying that you didn't really kind of like Thank you. Shame it weren't like As everyone Ray started really singing read it. Read like. the books she took from the tree library <laughs> from Achto. I mean, as we saw, those books are pretty large. She may have got started. How far through, who knows? Mm -hmm. I don't know if we've talked about the portion of time it's been since the last one. Um, How long has it been since the last yeah. one, JJ? Have we, have we said? It's been, a, it's been a little while. So she's get, I guess she's getting through them. <laughs> That's me with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't have them on Audible. She can't just listen to what she's... That would afraid. be fantastic. In Yoda sentences, so you were always sort of trying to figure out what it meant. Well, uh, Ray has crazy strong force powers now, but her lightsaber's in pieces. Is she rebuilding that lightsaber, or are we uh, in a start-from-scratch situation here? Mm. Good question. Well, um, my answer is not the end of the story because there are many more months to come and a film to come. But um, the lightsaber that Ray inherited from Luke lives. It fucking should. Are Been there, there any, for so uh, many fucking films. Sure, you can't <laughs> tell me what they are. <laughs> Put are it back together, fucking. New force powers that we were not aware of before that appear. The, for instance, we were uh, thrown for a delightful loop on the force projection of Luke at the end of episode eight. Is there any new things that Ray is gonna pull on us? To, like, is she gonna be able to pull down a Star Destroyer with her mind? Is she? No. Can she, can she force flow through time? Is there, is She's there, not there this, but is there any new tricks? <laughs> um, this 
is a JJ question. <laughs> what are the tricks, JJ? I think that's a yes. I think that's a yes um, if you have to ask him. Uh, no, I, I used to love Daisy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> loved her. Thought she was awesome. Um, but I'll say this, uh, there are uh, some extraordinary things that the, the character and Daisy uh, did in this movie. And uh, among, there she is now. Um, and, and some of the things, you know, obviously we don't want to say anything at this moment, but I will say that some of the stuff that happened uh, was possible because we had this, the most incredible uh, stunt coordinator. Eunice. Eunice uh, Hoodhart, who was just the greatest. And she uh, did remarkable work with uh, the entire cast. And some of the things that uh, you allude to will be seen. There she is now. Eunice, uh, she's the best. Anyway, uh, yes, there are some other things, and you'll uh, see them soon. Um, Daisy, what's up with um, Ray and Kylo Ren? <laughs> or Rose and Finn? <laughs> or, or Ray and Finn? From your, from your point of view, what's going on here? Where is this relationship going? I guess the Kylo and Ray thing, we'll have to wait and see. The, the Rose and Finn thing, I don't know. Finn, what do you think? I mean, she's she my girl, you know, she's my girl. Um, I guess uh, it's a nice chemistry, just nice chemistry is all right. It's, it's the middle of war. We're trying to figure ourselves out. A lot of we love you one happen. day, <laughs> don't love you the next. It's a, it's, a, it's a very distracting place to fall in love. I guess, Daisy, what I'm asking is, do you have any more uh, forced uh, visions of him semi-naked? Uh, wow. Put it straight out there. Let's sell some tickets right now. Let's sell some tickets. Um, I think I can confirm there are no more semi-naked Kylos. Unfortunately. Only full. Only full naked. <laughs> we had to take it up a notch, guys. <laughs> So if they don't continue it, then it's just Ryan Johnson uh, with his Adam's own pervy here, thing. Question, isn't it? Anybody here might know his, his chest in in episode eight. Did he wax? Because it's completely. <laughs> is, that a, is that a Brazilian? A Why is screen? there no? He's a big man, not one hair on his chest. Uh, when he turned around, it was as surprising to the crew, I think, as to everyone. It was. It's a. He's a big man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I'm hardly the only one who went dirty with that. You ever said about Brazil, you know, earlier? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I'm so sorry. Talk, talk to me about his lightsaber. Um, <laughs> is, I'm just talking about... Okay. Wow, Kelly that got Marie really Tran. fucking... Okay. Okay. <laughs> Really showing us some love, man. What the fuck? Well, it's kind of like understandable because the, the amount of negativity and shit that she got. And I don't agree with any of that. I really, really don't. The actress, it's not her fault. This is cool because it was not her fault. She was hired to do a job. She, she really said the, le the fucking dialogue. She did what she was told. That's her job as an actress. Thank you is to do what the director <laughs> says. If you've How got any you? problems with Rose, How's it going, everybody? it's Ryan Johnson who should get it in the mix, Woo! not her. As, like, she... Now, uh, let's talk about a little uh, character preparation. So that was cool that the fans, you like... You the audiobook version of the novel yeah, of Rose's backstory, Cobalt Squadron. Yes, I did. Okay. Did getting to know your character in book form uh, give you more to bring into this film? Um, I had never done an audiobook before, and I... The thing I learned is that it's a very long process. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a lot of backstory with uh, Rose and Paige, her older sister, so I think it definitely helped me um, in this upcoming one. Yeah. As a trained uh, mechanic, um, what, what do you think that Rose would uh, think of the Millennium Falcon? It's really cool. Uh, but universally regarded as a hunk of junk. Universally, universally regarded. Everyone in that resistance staff thinks it's pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you, you kiss Finn again in this movie? Woo. Listen, all I'm going to say is Finn's a very eligible bachelor. 
Much like John Boye. I mean, sorry. Don't <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut that out. Well, okay. Is, is that a yes or a no? And please say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope you say yes, or I also have a lot of fan fiction that goes in the shredder at this point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, when last we saw your character, where was she? She was in a coma. Okay. Yeah, coma. asleep. Mm -hmm. Taking a rest. I would yep. like to do that, too. <laughs> Can you tell me, JJ, if everybody we see on stage right now are, ends up together in this film? Can I tell you that? Well, you say that they're going on, a, they're going on this adventure together. Yeah. Does that include everyone we're seeing, including, including Kelly Marie? Uh, I will say that... Uh, uh, Good majority. How dare you? Because we've already seen the uh, picture. I, 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 am not your, I am not your agent right now. I am point. their agent right now. Well, I you can say a good agent. majority of the people on the I stage. I really appreciate that, Stephen. Um, <laughs> way to pit me against my friends. Um, I, I, I would say that uh, you, you have to see what happens in the thing, but I will say that uh, I, I, I was grateful to um, Ryan Johnson for so many things that he did in a, the, 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 the greatest though, uh, the greatest for me was uh, casting Kelly Marie. I swear to God, if I get like another phone call while I'm like, Hello, you keep Jonas. noticing cuts. Hello. I'm cutting shit out, man. I swear to God. <laughs> Can I say one thing? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, that, man. That was sure work for celebration, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Is your fourth That's time cool, playing man. Chewy? Yes, sir. Ha are there any uh, differences to the actual Chewy outfit that you're wearing, the actual Chewy costume? I believe it has been this way since 1977. So, no. I mean, and I just want to say, can we get a big applause for my mentor, Mr. Peter Mayhew, at this point? Let me just pick it up. If it wasn't for his unique physicality, I don't think. Chewbacca would be as memorable, and I don't think we would be seeing him here today uh, on, uh, you know, b anticipating his uh, upcoming uh, uh, appearance in the film, because it, it, the character is just so beloved, and you guys have shown it with your t-shirts and, and, and the kind words uh, all throughout these five incredible years that I've become this, uh, uh, transformed into this character, and I'm just so grateful for everyone who's been supportive. Let's go, Chewy! <laughs> well, why do you... <laughs> That's so cool that, that he can that, actually uh, do it, man. Chewy is Full such respect a to him. character. What do you, what do you think? What, who, what does Chewy mean? Because we don't, we don't know what Chewy is saying. He, he, is, he is a presence. What, what do you think his presence means? Well, I think uh, for me, uh, playing Chewbacca is is sort of a duty at this point, because when I was sitting in, in our living room carpet, wide-eyed, watching the, the, the saga start, and, and Luke drinking that blue milk, and, and seeing Chewbacca for the first time, I was sure that in this world, there's a place for everyone, and that I have to show everyone that Chewbacca, and no matter how big or small you are, there's a place for you in this world, and that's what I believe. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and, and finally, Jonas, what, what do porgs taste like? <laughs> they taste best fried. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> I want to know what it was like shooting in Jordan. What was it like to be out there in the, for all, this is a question for any of you, what was it like to be out there in that desert? Anthony, compare that to Tunisia. What was Jordan like compared to Tunisia? Jordan was a, a truly remarkable experience. Uh, the first day driving out there on the set, it was my wife, Christine, who said, but this is Ralph McQuarrie's painting. The, the backdrops, those stone faces that you're looking at, and I would get goosebumps 
Every day we drove out 45 minutes from the hotel, and it was, oh, it sounds corny, it, it was beyond a privilege to be there. And remarkably, the desert put up with us. Every day it tried to gain itself back to cover the roads that had been built to put us in to say goodbye, no, enough, leave us alone. It was the most astounding setting to be in. And the Jordanian people, the Jordanian army, everybody there really were part of, part of our kind of family. It was a glorious experience. Uh, Kathy and JJ, how long were you guys in the desert? Well, actually, we had a crew there prepping um, for months prior to us arriving, and then we shopped for about three weeks. Where's the nearest bar, JJ? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Stephen, we were working. Um, it, it was an amazing thing, and we did. We had hundreds of people in, in, in unbelievable costumes that Michael Kaplan <clears throat> designed. We had incredible creatures that Neil Scanlon and, and, and his team designed. So to be there with literally hundreds of people and in the the heat of it, and having to take you know food breaks and bathroom breaks and prayer breaks, and it was a whole thing. Uh, but we got through it and actually finished a day ahead of schedule, which is kind of incredible. And sandstorm breaks. Remember that. There'd be times when uh, you'd see these big, huge red clouds coming over. We'd be in the middle of shooting, and everyone would have to take cover and go into tents and sometimes wait an hour or so for these huge sandstorms to blow over. Never thought I'd be in that. We, we saw a couple of uh, uh, creature designs uh, just now. Can, can you tell us who they are? Or can you show us? Are there any other creatures that you're going to bring out show something? Um, there's a, a, a fun uh, character who just appears, um, <laughs> whose name is Claude with a K. Uh, K L A U D, uh, and he is a, a friend of the resistance and someone who actually, uh, it turns out, Chewie brought into the. It looks like something you would see in. Um, there's Greg Rubber. Like going to the galaxy or something. Uh, like but there's there are so many. I, there were when, when we did episode seven. I, I felt like um, it had been. There was no way to top what had been created uh, in terms of of creatures. When you see That's this cool. movie, you'll see that that. Neil and the whole creature team did it. Uh, it's an incredible thing what they've made, I, what they built, why and the actors who perform them and, and puppeteer them. Even new different remarkable. species. Can I just Stick say, uh, been there was one particular you know I mean? creature like, roaming around on set that uh, I really uh, thought that was wonderfully made, uh, and uh, it was my son uh, who got to visit the set. And uh, I'm just kidding. And uh, it, it was so lovely working on this film after becoming a father. Uh, to have my son, that's my son, right there. <laughs> and, and if you see the wonder, and he's not afraid of Chewbacca, he had a good time with this cast, and especially Daisy. Thank you so much for all the cast, for welcoming little Otos, whose name nobody can pronounce, uh, <laughs> just like mine to this uh, Star Wars experience. Thank you so much, guys, and uh, thank you. Uh, he seems like a cool fucking dude, man. He seems like a cool fucking dude. Uh, no, at the risk of, of, of pandering, uh, Star Wars fans are the greatest fans in the world. And I know... Yep. I know, because I, I am one of them. Um, I've been a Star Wars fan three weeks longer than any of you, and... You can look up online why that's true. That is true. It's true. What to say? I would love to tell the story. It's my story, BB-8. Give him one second. Yes. Tell the story. This is very quickly the story. So when I was uh, in 1977, when I was 13 years old, local radio station was giving away tickets to this movie called Star Wars. Nobody knew what it was. And me and my friends called in. We were like the eighth caller. And we got four tickets to go see Star Wars big blue tickets that you had to go to the local radio station to pick up WTMA, 1250 on your AM dial. And, One and, and it, was, I, it was me, Keith Sargi, Haskell Feudenberg, and Haskell Feudenberg's mom, because somebody had to drive. And we, were handed, we handed the tickets in. We said, can we keep the tickets as we went in? Because we didn't know what it was, but it felt like it was special, because there were big tickets, and it had the Death Star, and it had like, an X-Wing fighter sweeping up like that. And it said Star Wars, and what the hell was Star Wars? And we walked in, we sat down, and as soon as, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, it came on the screen, we got chills, because we knew that, A, that was a, a unique way to look at science fiction, the future through the past. And also, it immediately set you in that fairy tale world. And then, of course, 
and no one knew what the hell was going on and everyone cheered in the room. We didn't know what we were in for. And then two hours later, we woke up Haskell's mom and said, the movie's over. <laughs> she didn't like the flashy lights. And we got in the car, went home, and it was a full moon. And I know it was three weeks before because there was a full moon and we all thought it was the Death Star following us as we went home. <laughs> and on Monday when I got to school, we couldn't explain to anybody how everything was different now and that we had seen the future. So anyway, that's why I've been a fan three weeks longer than all of y'all, so. Wow. But I'm sorry, Bibi, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I know you, I think he, he's got something to say. Is there... sure. um, yeah, uh, in this movie, um, BB-8 has uh, a, a new friend. Would you guys want to meet him? Uh, let's bring him out. This is Dio. What? And, and, and uh, what's this fellow's name again? Yeah, this is Dio. Dio. And, and uh, this is yet another uh, incredible collaboration and, and creation of uh, Neil Scanlon and the, the Creature and Robotics team on the movie. I can see like a slight version of BB-8 with the circle just going in one way and then with a, a point on top. I will say that when, when, we, when we did the film, uh, we never had Dio exist quite this way. A there was a, on, on a rig a and puppeteers and things. And like it's with great engineering, Celebration last time, work, but uh, these were different designs that we went through working on him. Nothing's going to um, be... Nothing's going to be... Like with Celebration R2, last man. time when, uh, on episode R2's 7, when just... BB-8 rolled out and we'd never had a BB-8 be able to roll out. Uh, it's amazing what Celebration uh, makes these uh, geniuses do uh, and force them to do. So this is really uh, was built for you. I actually don't like it. I don't like the design, the well, structure. But, but like we're done here, I got one more question for you, JJ. Um, can we please show our appreciation to JJ and Kathy and to the entire cast? I don't I'm like it. Thank for being here. It's like trailer time now, yeah? I'm thinking trailer time. Can they check this out? Should be right. Coming to the end. But JJ, before before any of you leave, is there is there anything else? <laughs> That's everything. <laughs> I think I know what they want. By the any chance. By any stretch of the imagination, is there anything else you would like to uh, share with the audience? Who here wants to see a teaser trailer? Come on. Okay. Okay, before we do this, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Stephen Colbert. Thanks, He's doing all right, man. Thank you so much. He's, He's doing so all right. Woo! Kathy, Anthony, Billy, Daisy, Chuck, Oscar, Kelly, Jonas, Naomi. Uh, we're gonna get out of your way, uh, but mostly, thank you so much. Uh, hope you enjoy. Cheers. I'm excited, man. I really am. Like, there's so much going into this one. With it being the last one of this fucking Skywalker saga, like. <clears throat> on all we know. Luke? A thousand generations live in you now. So she's fixed it, she's put it together. But this is your fight.
Kylo and shit. He sounds like a Thai fighter or Thai something. fucking way the rise of Skywalker no one's really gone and then we hear a fucking Emperor fucking laugh what the fuck is that really the Emperor it got me fucking teary eyed and fucking shit man No fucking way. The rise of Skywalker. Whoa, 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 whoa. who's on face? Who's on face? Fuck! Oh my god! The no Emperor's in it. The Emperor's in episode 9. <laughs> 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 Roll it again. Oh shit. No fucking way. I feel like a little kid again, man. Like seriously, what the fuck? So, okay. So, like, it's been, um, we're hearing Luke talk over it, right? So, so is Luke going to be guiding her as, like, a force ghost? That's cool. You see, um, the cast, like, react to it. But, obviously, she's now fixed, like, the lightsaber. I think it got cut in half or broken up, like, pulled in half or whatever. Like, could that be Kylo in, in the ship? But we don't really see, like, the face. It's some type of, like, Thai interceptor or something, like this... Like, some kind of Thai ship. Kylo... Putting together his helmet, retconning, smashing it. <laughs> Fucking Lando. Saga comes to an end. See, we see um, C-3PO and then Leia like, ah. Oh. Like we see, we have not seen R2-D2 in the, sh the um, trailer. And is that a part of the fucking death, um... <laughs> oh my god. That's the Emperor as well. I know that, like, like... <sighs> like, it looked like a part of the Star, um, fucking Death Star, right? I was gonna say Star Destroyer, but it's, it's a part of the fucking Death Star, right? The fucking dish part, like, really? And then, like, like Luke said, no one's ever really gone, or something like that, right? And then we hear the Emperor's laugh. So what does that mean? Is the Emperor still alive? 
after being thrown down the fucking thing and blowing up. Like, how how did he survive? Like, okay, here's my crazy fucking theory of how this is going to work out. We know that Palpatine has used clones before. Of course, with the clone walls and, and everything. And he had that technology or, like, He's had it there. I, if if I was in his shoes, if I was an evil Sith Lord, and and there was a whole thing like he was talking to Anakin about um, immortality and and stopping like your loved ones from dying or this that da da da. If I was the Emperor. And I knew that I have Darth Vader, my right hand man, but this half man, half machine is nothing compared to what Anakin Skywalker was. You know what I mean? I I would have tried to look into some type of cloning. That's just me. I, I would have looked into some way to try and clone Anakin and bring him back. In case something happened with with Vader and he died, I would all I could always bring back Anakin as a clone and, and he will still be like the chosen one and this, that, da da da. And if you could corrupt him from a young age, like that's something the Emperor would fucking think. Like let's let's really be honest. The Emperor was this evil, nasty, savage fucker and, and he wouldn't think twice about doing that. You know what I mean? But also to clone himself is something like what happened in Return of the Jedi actually happened. So, like, if the Emperor died at the end of, like, Return of the Jedi, like, we we know with Battlefront 2, like, I've not really played through the, the story mode yet. I really should. I might actually do it on my gaming channel. Link down below. Um... But I, I have, like, seen, like, little things that there were people carrying out the Emperor's orders after the Emperor died and, and like, the Empire had kind of fallen. There was still... The Empire still fighting the fucking rebels and everything. We don't know if the, the, the Emperor had certain people who had, like, fucking test tube babies, fucking clones or whatever, take like a test tube baby or something and take like a clone of, of the emperor and fucking bring him back. You know what I mean? Plus you have to think about the fucking time jump as well. Like the time jump from when clones was a thing to the time of the galactic empire and everything. Maybe there was some way that they can transplant the thoughts into a clone's body or something. You know what I mean? Like some fucking uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger fucking Seven Days. Was it called Seven Days? That one about cloning where they could transplant thoughts and put it into a new clone's body or something. Maybe they could do something in this where the Emperor could make like a copy of his brain and put it into a clone's body. You know what I mean? Maybe something like that. So yeah, there's a time jump from that. And then the Emperor dies. And did they, like, I can't remember the exact time jump from, like, Return of the Jedi to The Force Awakens. Was it 20 or 30 years? I know there was, like, a massive time jump. And then Ray goes, like, back to a theory that I've had now. And I think I said this earlier, or I might have cut it out. But, like, a theory that I've had for a while now that... Um, Ray is actually a clone of Anakin because Ray's like if Ray's generally a nobody, she's nothing. She she's just someone who's who's sensitive with the Force. She's way over fucking powers. She's a complete Mary Sue. Anyone who says that she's not don't know what the fuck they're talking about. The only way that they can truly, really explain her power and and how strong she is with the Force. Is to say that she's a clone of Anakin. She looked like whoever did it, right, knew that the that, that, that Palpatine had samples of uh, Anakin or Vader's DNA or whatever, and they cloned it and they made it female, so that it would could stay hidden. And then they 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 had it, they raised it, um, 
very similar to like Boba Fett, where all the other clones that they, they would like genetically like it. It still took like a long period of time, but yet they grew faster. While Boba Fett was un like modified, like a complete replica clone of Jango Fett. What if like there was no enhancement so that the child grew faster, just a complete 100% copy, but just made female, right? And then whoever did it took that child, raised it, and it got to the point where the child was a, a few years old and took it to fucking Jakku and dropped it off and left it and went. You know what I mean? And now that we know that the title of the fucking movie is called Rise of Skywalker, if she turns out to be Skywalker, she's a clone of Anakin, and Palpatine is still alive, or maybe Palpatine is a clone, in a way reconnects the whole entire saga, going back to the start with the clones. Now our two main... Because Anakin was meant to bring balance to the Force. He was meant to like destroy the Sith, not join them. As Obi Wan said, what if, what if we actually going to have that now? So it never happened in like Revenge of the Sith, where Anakin was to go up against Palpatine and strike him down. Blah, blah. He joined him. Anakin failed. He joined the, the dark side. And blah, blah, blah. but now this time around, we have a clone of Anakin. We have a Palpatine, a clone of maybe it's a clone or or it is actually Palpatine after all these years. He's so strong and, and so deep with the dark side that he survived and he's still here. I, I I could actually get on board on that. Like I said right at the start, like I want to know how they're going to wrap up this story. And in a way, yes, this is a new chapter. And yes, um, like Catherine Kennedy earlier was saying about how like it's been 40 years since George started it and times have changed and da da da. Yes. It's true, but you can make it more modern as much as you want, but you have to keep true to the original content. You know what I mean? The original, and that even includes the prequels. Things have to go full circle. You know, you can't start off a story and go all the way around, and then the last fucking few fucking chapters go off a different way. You have to bring it back to the source, and the source is Anakin was meant to destroy the dark side. He was the chosen one. And Anakin failed, but yet his clone survives. Maybe Rey will be the one to bring balance to the Force and destroy the dark side. Like, I don't know. I don't know. And maybe that's why they were hinting at it in The Last Jedi, that Rey was more like a grey Jedi. You know, that she would bring true balance to the Force. Because she's... A clone of Anakin. She's like she brings out like the Jedi are wrong, and that's where Luke was. Oh, okay. Things are starting to like the more I'm thinking about it. And granted, I've had a drink, but the more I'm thinking about it, like Luke failed because the way of the Jedi was wrong, and and Luke realized that at, at the end that the way of the Jedi is wrong, and the way of the Sith is wrong. There has to be this grey area. Literally the grey Jedi. And that's what I think Rey has become. And so for her to bring balance to the Force, she has to destroy the Emperor. And save Ben and bring him back. Maybe that's it. If that's how they really do it, I could look back on The Force Awakens and uh, The Last Jedi and be like, Okay, I accept them as a part of this greater story. You know what I mean? I really hope I'm right. I really, really hope I'm right. Like, if it's anything else, like if Ray is still a nobody, like she's not connected to the Skywalker family in any way, shape or form, then she's just a complete Mary Sue, an overpowered female character just for the sake of having an overpowered female character. Stupid to me. But the fact that it's called Rise of Skywalker, the only real Skywalker left in this movie is Kylo Ren. Ben Solo. Yes, second name doesn't really matter. He's still a direct descendant from Anakin. So 
he's really the only true Skywalker left in the fucking show. So if you want to sit there and say that, oh, this movie is called Rise of Skywalker, if it's not about fucking Ben Solo, then it's got to be about Rey. And, and how does Rey fit into the Skywalker family? If she was Luke's son, um, I was going to say Luke's son, if she was Luke's daughter, Luke would have said something. There would have been some kind of connection. So I don't think she's a child. I think... <sighs> Plus then, there's the whole thing about Luke's hand. Like, Luke's hand got cut off and the saber dropped. and then, But yet the lightsaber was found. What about Luke's hand? Maybe somebody could have cloned his hand. Maybe Ray could be a clone of Luke. I don't know, man. I really, really don't. But I'm so invested in this. I want to see how this ends. I really do. <sighs> okay, I'm going to wrap this up. It's getting quite late right now. Like, right now, like, honestly, it's... As I film this, it's five minutes to midnight. It's like 11.52 right now on a Friday night. I've had a bit to drink. I'm probably going to spend, like, the next two, three hours editing this and putting it all together for you guys for Saturday. Yeah, I'm going to be uploading the full length. I, I still don't know what to do. I still don't know what to do. Um, if I'm going to do like an edited down panel reaction, a full length one, or I don't know, I'm starving as well, I need to get some food, so yeah man, give this video a thumb up if you like it, comment down below, let me know what you think, and subscribe if you haven't already man, alright, I've been Sifurian, I'll catch you in the next one man, I'm losing my fucking voice, what the fuck, <laughs> I'll catch you on the next one man.